Chicago Robinson was getting ready to start his junior season here as the starting quarterback for the Memphis Tigers. But that starting part was going to change as in the offseason, he was having to battle for the QB2 position. This had made no sense as he led his team to a bowl game against UConn last year where he excelled in the game and even helped lead his team to a bowl victory in his first year starting where he threw for almost 3,800 yards and 39 touchdowns as a true sophomore. He just had to do what he could to win the second string position in the offseason and sure enough it was no surprise that he did it just made no sense that he was an 87 overall and was stuck on the bench behind Harris Boyd who was a 78 overall junior there was nothing else Chicago could do but patiently wait for a chance to take the starting job back and he would just have to be the best backup he could until he got that opportunity first game of the season was against Arkansas State and we handled this one pretty well and Chicago Robinson would not get any playing time as the backup in week one his team would get the 20 to 18 victory over the Red Wolves and unfortunately for Chicago Harris Boyd had a pretty good game in his first game as a starter that would be followed up with another game at home the following week against the UMass Minutemen and once again this was a game that Chicago Robinson did not see the field at all as it was surprisingly close as the Memphis Tigers would get a 19 to 7 win over the Minutemen and I'll be honest the offense had to be pretty bad if these numbers from a QB are getting you player of the game award but wins don't lie as the Memphis Tigers were now 2-0 with Harris Boyd as their starting quarterback and they were headed on the road to take on Arkansas. And this probably was not a good thing for Chicago Robinson as Harris Boyd would help lead the Tigers to a win over SEC opponent Arkansas with a close 41-38 victory. And he put up a pretty solid stat line this game as well with four touchdown passes. Despite just playing the game of his career and defeating an SEC team, coach decided that Chicago could now challenge him for the starting role. In the first drill he was going to have to win was the triple option which worked great because he had been doing this for two years already. And to no one's surprise Chicago performed amazing in this drill and would end up winning it. The next drill he had to compete in was pocket presence and after having a full year of starting under his belt this was no problem for Chicago at all. And even though he wouldn't perform as well in the scramble and survive drill as he would lose this one to Boyd, winning two of the three battles was enough for Chicago to win back the starting position. And he was taking over an undefeated team that was currently ranked 15th in the country getting ready to take on a tough matchup as his first game starting his junior season would be on the road against Boise State. Would not be great field position to start the game for Chicago Robinson in the offense as he would give it off to Deshaun Bishop on the first play of the game third and one and Bishop would pick up the first down bringing up now a third and three play action Robinson back to throw for the first time today rolling out to his right that would be completed for a first down and more. Getting the Tigers down to the 44 now on another third down as Robinson is going to connect with his tight end St. Germain. And the senior would pick up the first down keeping this drive alive for the Tigers as now Robinson keeping it on the read option. Only picking up three on that play is right around midfield running the reverse and that's going to go backwards for a loss. A third and 14 situation forcing Robinson back to throw as that would be completed but it is going to be short of the first down. And so the first drive of the day for Chicago. Chicago in the offense would result in a punt here. As this drive not off to a great start after that holding call against the offense. Robinson back to throw. That's knocked incomplete. The senior tight end, Harrison St. Germain, can't hold on to that one as Robinson swarmed in the backfield. He would be dropped for a loss as Malachi Nelson and the Boise State Broncos would respond with a touchdown on the next drive. And now Robinson looking to get his offense down the field and at least getting a field goal here before halftime. As we are under two minutes to go in the first half and the Tigers have yet to put up any points on the board yet today as Robinson just barely gets this one off in time. Setting up a second and seven as he's dropping back to throw and going to the left side for a first down. Inside Boise State territory hoping this drive doesn't stall out like the first one did. That would be a pickup of seven completed to Brady Cluse is now back to throw and it would be Harrison St. Germain with the first down. Bringing the Memphis offense inside the 22 as Robinson almost intercepted on that play. A dangerous throw into double 
double coverage as it is knocked incomplete. Following that up with another incomplete pass, bringing up a third and ten. Now Robinson, he's going to step up and take it himself, but he's going to be short of the first down. But thankfully, the special teams unit would be able to tack on three points here as they would get another chance with the ball. Trying to take a deep shot to Kloos there on the corner route, but that would fall incomplete. Going back right side for a first down. Down to the 48-yard line of Boise State. Robinson back to throw across the middle. That's going to be completed. His senior tight end, St. Germain, with the reception, and the Tigers are moving the ball quickly as that's going to be inside the 10. First and goal to go. 10 seconds left. Robinson back to throw, rolling out to his right, and that's going to be short of the end zone. And despite calling a timeout, somehow their coach is going to let the clock run out in the first half. A second and six now. And we needed some points on this possession as Chicago Robinson's first pass of the second half would be completed for a first down. Third and five now dropping back to throw in the shotgun, going right side completed for another first down. And yet another third down where we have to turn to Chicago Robinson who's going to complete that pass to Stephen Clinton for a first down. We unfortunately have been in a bad habit of coach calling as many running plays as possible and only choosing to pass the ball after running the ball hasn't worked leaving us in a big yardage situation. It's really put a hindrance on our offense offense trying to get down the field to score this game as Chicago Robinson really hasn't had too many opportunities on a drive to really just sling the ball around and get his team down the field that was starting to change here though in the second half now that coach realized we needed to throw the ball because it was the last play of the third quarter and our team was down by eight still without a touchdown on the board once again though we had finally gotten into Boise State territory as this would be completed to a wide open Harrison St. Germain bringing us inside the 10 yard line from the eight and finally we would get a touchdown on the board as the senior tight end Harrison St. Germain would pull that one in and we would stay on the field to go for two to tie it up as Deshaun Bishop would fight his way in where all of a sudden now it was tied at 14 and we had a chance to win the game. Our defense came up with a huge stop so now we have to get down the field and take the lead in this game and finally coach was getting away from the run game and relying on Chicago in his arm but he would go down with a sack. That is not what you want in that situation bringing up a second and 18 just barely Barely getting that off in time. It's going to be completed. Brady Kloos hanging on to that one in traffic because that's going to bring up a third and ten. Robinson hit and drop for a loss again. Boise State's defense coming up huge with that sack on third down. And Malachi Nelson would take their offense down the field and give them the lead with a touchdown. We had under a minute and a half to go now. Still with all three timeouts. But we were now at risk of losing this game to unranked Boise State on the road. As that would be almost intercepted. A dangerous throw from the junior quarterback bringing up third and four going right side for a first down bringing the ball up to the 45 yard line as we are now under a minute to go in this game Robinson in the shotgun dropping back to throw he's gonna step up and try to take it himself he would be just short bringing up a third and one as we are 43 seconds and counting to go this could be the game as Boise State gets the big third down stop Robinson with pressure in his face finds Devontae Leverett for the first down keeping this drive and the Tigers hopes alive as across the middle knocked incomplete. Third and 10, 11 seconds left. They can get maybe two plays off here. And Chicago Robinson going down for a sack. Fourth and 16, eight seconds left. This is the game here. Robinson back to throw to the end zone and that's knocked incomplete. Boise State is going to hold off Robinson in the Tigers offense as they're going to get the 21 to 14 win over us here on the road. And man, it didn't help when coach just wanted to pound the ground run relentlessly in the first half even though nothing was going for us in the run game and having four drops from our receivers as well just isn't going to help us win any games at all this year. The Tigers had a bye week following that loss so we went right to work and practice to try to get things a little better with Chicago Robinson leading the offense and hopefully one thing that was going to change was coaches play calling in the first half and not relying so much on the run. We were going to need it because even though Tulane didn't look the best on paper we knew they were going to be a tough opponent in our next game. They gave us plenty of trouble last season in our matchup so let's see if we can head on down to the field for another rainy game at home and see if we can get a victory over the green wave unfortunately to no one's surprise coach was sticking with the running game to start this week as we'd go three and out on our first drive with a minute and a half to go in the first quarter we still had not thrown a single pass but somehow managed to turn the ball over still and just like that we were down six nothing had not thrown the ball and the first pass of the day wouldn't even be from robinson backed up to a third and four with 10 seconds 
seconds to go in the first quarter. This would be our first pass, and it was almost intercepted as we had under three minutes to go in the first half, and we're down 13-0. Coach refusing to pass the ball at all in the first half, dug us into holes like this against Tulane, as we were now trying to play catch up with the green wave. Down 13, Chicago trying to get this pass off in time, and that's going to be his second turnover of the day. Tulane would take advantage of it, and they would go down and score a field goal before halftime. And now all of a sudden, down 16 with 20 seconds to go in the first half, Coach decided it was a good time to finally start throwing. On second and 10, nearing midfield here, Chicago Robinson would connect with Harrison St. Germain for a first down. And it just really bugs me that Coach doesn't want to get aggressive until it's too late as we'd find our way inside the 10. We're on first and goal. Chicago on play action was looking to take a shot to the end zone, but would go down for a sack with three seconds left. And for once, finally, we had a competent coaching staff who wouldn't run out the clock. We were still down by 13, though, and we needed points desperately on this drive as we would get inside the 10-yard line. Setting up now a first and goal from the 8 as Robinson would drop back to throw, and that would be knocked incomplete. He would try through the air one more time on second and goal and would have Brady Cluse in the end zone for our first touchdown of the day. And Tulane's offense would answer right back with a field goal of their own, so it would now be 19-10 to 10 as we got the ball back. Bringing up now a third and eight as Deshaun Bishop would go in motion, needing to pick up this first down. Nearing the end of the third quarter, Robinson rolling around. He gets that off in time and it would be complete. It would be short of the first down, however, and thankfully our defense would get a stop, but our offensive line couldn't. That sack bringing us back to a second and 15 as Robinson's pass is going to be completed here to start the fourth quarter. The senior tight end, Harrison St. Germain coming down with that one as Robinson would take to the air again. Bidding that tight rope in there along the left sideline as it would be completed, then checking down to Brady Cluse on first and ten. And after running the ball with Bishop a couple times, that would bring the Tigers down inside the 15. Setting up first and goal to go from the seven as Robinson can escape the pressure in the backfield. And he would be dropped for a loss of five, bringing up second and goal from the 12. Under center, dropping back to throw. Robinson checking it across the middle to Stephen Clinton, who would be short of the goal line. On third and goal now from the to Robinson checking it down to Deshaun Bishop who would find his way into the end zone untouched and we had ourselves a ball game now but unfortunately our defense wouldn't be able to stop Tulane's offense as they would go down and score a touchdown making it now a nine point deficit again that we desperately needed to try to cover but with under two minutes to go in the game it wasn't going to look like we could pull off the comeback here against the green wave that pass would fall incomplete bringing up a second and ten now Robinson back to throw right side that would be completed but with a minute and a have to go we needed more than just four yard pickups and Robinson's pass knocked incomplete so this play could determine the game as fourth and six Robinson is going to be intercepted I don't know how he didn't see that defender sitting there right in front of his tight end and that would seal the deal for Tulane as they would get the win here on our home turf 26 to 17 over Chicago Robinson and the Tigers again it didn't help that coach wanted to do nothing but run the ball in the first half and surprise surprise we started throwing it in the second half and started getting points on the board. Hopefully that game was enough to help coach realize that we needed to start throwing the ball early in the game if we wanted to get points on the board and we'd see if he changed his mind on that as we got ready to take on our rivals here at home again taking on the UAB Blazers. This game was not off to a great start for Chicago Robinson as first pass play, he'd go down for a sack. And that definitely was forcing coach to pass here early on in the game as Robinson would complete this on third and 19. A big play there for the Memphis offense as Robinson's pass knocked incomplete, tipped and then caught for a first down. Some great concentration there from Jaleel Yaboa as he would catch that tip pass. Now Robinson to the end zone. That's gonna be completed to Stephen Clinton, his tight end for the first touchdown of the day. And Robinson is gonna help his team jump out to an early seven to nothing lead here over UAB as defense would get a stop the next possession. Their second drive already off to a good start as their pass midfield and Robinson would keep it on the read option. Picking up six yards on that play, now backed up to a third and eight. Robinson across the middle, that's gonna be completed for a first down. Stephen Clinton's second reception of the day as start of the second quarter now, Robinson taking a shot to the end zone that's gonna be completed to Jaleel Yaboa what a throw from the junior quarterback for six 
And Memphis already looking so much better here than they have the past few games as they are now up 14 to nothing over UAB. And Chicago Robinson has the offense driving poised. Look to score another touchdown on this drive and they will do just that as they go back to the same play as last drive. And Chicago Robinson would find Jaleel Yaboa on the same play for his second touchdown of the day. Memphis is now up 21 to nothing over the Blazers here running an RPO. That would pick up seven yards. Not enough for a first down though as third and three Robinson in the shotgun dropping back to throw and that's a dangerous throw there but he fits it in a tight window all the way inside the five yard line. First and goal to go Jacoby Banks with the big play and then right back to him for another touchdown the fourth one of the day for Robinson through the air and this game is starting to get out of hand quickly for UAB as all they've been able to do is tack on a field goal under a minute to go here in the first half Robinson hoping to get his team down the field and get some more points as he's gonna have to check that one off and even though it would be a short dump down they'd still pick up a first down right at midfield Robinson across the middle that's gonna be completed now inside UAB territory and the Memphis Tigers are poised looking to score again. Jacoby Banks getting them inside the 15 with that reception. Robinson now rolling to his right, not liking what he sees as he's going to throw this one away. A dangerous play there by the junior quarterback, but now he's going to the end zone. That's going to be just short. The refs will mark it down at the half yard line and then on the RPO, Robinson a quick pitching catch to the end zone for a touchdown. And even though UAB would add on another field goal, it was a 35 to six lead here for Memphis headed into the second half. If they score another touchdown on this drive, I can't imagine that Chicago Robinson is gonna be in the game much longer for them here as on third and six. Back to throw, pressure coming, he gets that off in time, it's completed. The junior quarterback throwing that into an extremely tight window and somehow Stephen Clinton comes down with that one. He's now on second and nine, Robinson again finds his tight end for a first down. Inside the 15 is now on third and three, dumping it short, that's gonna be just shy of the first down marker. And at that point they would kick a field goal and coach would take Robinson out of the game. And the Tigers would finish strong with a 38 to 13 win here over their rival at home and Chicago Robinson having one of his best games of the season so far and rightfully so it would get him named player of the game with five touchdown passes and he would tack on 365 yards on the day with a 91% completion percentage another big win for Robinson off the field as well as he would get all A's on his midterm exams and after losing their status in the top 25 Memphis had found their way back into the rankings it was time to see if they could hold on to that 24 spot though as they were traveling to take on UTSA on the road and they could not afford to lose to another unranked team this season. Chicago Robinson and the Memphis offense would start with the ball today and just like the start of the game against UAB Robinson would take a sack but on second and 15 he would connect to pick up the first down. Those would be the only two pass plays through the entire drive as it would be a handoff to Micaiah Bedford who would punch it in for the first Memphis touchdown of the day. And UTSA would follow that up with a field goal on their first possession, so Memphis would be up 7-3. And in the few passes he's had today, Chicago Robinson has been on point for the Tigers. And just as I say that, he overthrows a wide open Brady Cluse on that corner route. And then is going to take a sack on the next play. That's going to bring up now a third and 13. Robinson is just going to have to dump it off to his halfback out of the backfield. But thankfully that would get the Tigers in field goal range, and they would go up by a touchdown over UTSA. Nothing happening on that drive as the Tigers would have to punt the ball, but the defense would get a stop against the Roadrunners offense. That big pass completion there to Brady Cluse would get them back into field goal range, but Robinson and the offense were thinking touchdown this drive. As somehow that pass would be completed as he was hit as he throws, and then a quick pitch and catch to Stephen Clinton as the tight end hauls in the touchdown for the Tigers. And it was now a 17-3 lead for Memphis as they were looking to tack on another touchdown here before half. That completion would would get them inside UTSA territory as Robinson hit and drop for a loss. This line has not done a great job of giving him much time in the pocket in this first half today. But a fantastic pass completion there, dropping it in the basket to Brady Cluse and then going to the end zone. That's going to be Jaleel Yaboa hauling in the touchdown for the Tigers. Robinson looking absolutely fantastic on that minute drive to get his team into the end zone before halftime. And now they have a 24 to three lead over UTSA, but Robinson is going to throw this into double coverage and that's going to be picked off. 
Not a great start to the second half for Robinson, but at least the defense would have his back and would get a stop against the Roadrunners. Facing now a third and 12, under two minutes to go in the third quarter. Robinson across the middle, offset, knocked incomplete. So the offense would get another shot here before the end of the third quarter as Brady Cluse coming down with that one, slipping a tackle, and the end zone is wide open for him to run into. That's six for Memphis. And this was becoming a blowout here as 31 to three, Memphis would lead UTSA as we would end the third quarter and I can imagine Robinson won't be in the game for much longer today. Start of the fourth quarter, coach is still leaving him in at quarterback. Second and 13, that's knocked incomplete. Third and long now for the Memphis offense and they're just gonna hand it off here in the backfield. And even though they'd pump the ball, the next possession, Robinson would take the field again. Surprised that coach again is still leaving him in here as that's almost intercepted. And UTSA was slowly making their way back into the game 31 17 but with under a minute and a half to go not much they could do as this was going to be taken to the house for another Tigers touchdown and so all they would have to do is kneel up the clock here and Chicago Robinson would take his team on the road and walk away with a 38 to 17 victory over the Roadrunners here in San Antonio another great day for the junior quarterback 311 yards and three touchdowns on the day as that would bring us to the halfway point here of Chicago Robinson junior season and he'd got his team up to number 18 in the top 25 polls despite that they were still three teams out of the lead in the American Conference currently sitting in fourth place and even though he had a slow start to the year Robinson has really turned things around so far with 1,194 yards 11 touchdowns three interceptions and almost a 75% completion percentage we had eight skill points to spend but I wanted to wait and get one more so we could upgrade Chicago Robinson power attributes as that is where we would pick up next episode as number 18 Memphis would get ready to start its second half of the season with a home game against Army.